It was a Wednesday, the kind of forgettable midweek day where nothing of note ever happens. But this one was different. This Wednesday, I was following my wife, Chloe. I'm not proud of it. It wasn't planned. I didn't wake up that morning thinking, hey, I'm going to stalk my wife today. But you know how it goes. Something pulls at you, digs at your gut until you can't ignore it anymore. I just gotten out of a meeting when I saw her car pull out of a parking lot across the street from my office. It didn't make sense. She had no reason to be there, her work wasn't anywhere near downtown, and I hadn't heard a peep about her needing to run any errands. So, I did what any self-respecting husband in my position would do, I followed her. Chloe didn't notice me tailing her. I stayed back, kept my distance, but the whole thing felt ridiculous. Like something out of a bad detective movie. I laughed at myself a little. Maybe I was losing it, maybe it was just a coincidence. I even considered turning around and letting it go. But then she pulled into that hotel parking lot. That laugh? It died real fast. You don't follow your wife to a hotel at 2 p.m. on a Wednesday and shrug it off as nothing. My heart was hammering in my chest, but my feet kept moving, propelling me out of the car and across the asphalt before I could think better of it. I wasn't exactly sure what I'd find, but I knew it wasn't going to be good. She didn't see me. She was already inside by the time I reached the front doors, so I waited, feeling like a damn idiot standing there like some private investigator in my business suit. And then she came out, ten minutes later. Not alone. They didn't even try to hide it. No glancing over their shoulders, no quick goodbyes. Just Chloe and this guy, this tall, well-dressed, younger guy, walking out together like they had all the time in the world. He had his hand on her lower back, the kind of casual touch that told me this wasn't their first rendezvous. She was smiling, laughing at something he said, completely at ease. I think that was the moment everything snapped for me. I didn't freeze. I didn't panic. I walked straight toward them. There was no plan, no strategy, just me, the sidewalk, and the two of them. I guess they didn't expect to see me there, because when Chloe looked up and saw me coming, her face went pale. The smile vanished, just like that. She didn't even try to hide it. Didn't push him away or make some awkward distance between them. They both stood there, watching me walk up, like they were waiting for something. Who's this? I asked, eyes on her, not even acknowledging the guy next to her. Chloe blinked. It was like I caught her off guard with how blunt I was. Liam, I can explain. I can still hear her voice in my head. That calm, rehearsed tone, like she'd thought about this conversation already. Like she'd practiced it. What hit me in that moment wasn't just that she was here with someone else, it was that she had prepared for this. She had a script ready. But I didn't say anything back. I just kept looking at her, letting the silence hang between us. I wanted to see how long it would take before she cracked, before she'd say something real. The guy next to her, he looked uncomfortable, shifting on his feet. He wasn't nervous, though, not really. There wasn't any fear or guilt in his face. Just awkwardness, like he was caught in some minor inconvenience. I could have punched him right then and there, but I didn't. I didn't even address him. He wasn't the point. Not yet. Chloe cleared her throat. This isn't, she started, but I cut her off. Don't, I said, my voice steady. I don't want to hear it. Her eyes flicked toward the guy, and then back to me. It's not what you think, she tried again, but there was no conviction. And that was the thing, she wasn't even trying to sell it. There was no panic, no desperation. She knew the game was over. She wasn't fighting for us, for me. She was just standing there, waiting for me to react. And that's when I realized something, it wasn't just this moment. It had been going on for a while. She was already done with me. I stared at her for a moment longer, feeling this calm settling over me. But it wasn't the kind of calm you get when you're relaxed. It was that hollow, cold feeling you get when you're about to do something you can't take back. Get in the car, I said, my voice low. Chloe hesitated, glancing at the guy again. 
He opened his mouth, like he was going to say something, but I took a step toward him. He flinched, closing his mouth quickly. Smart move. He knew he wasn't part of this. Not really. Go, she whispered to him, giving him a look. He didn't argue. He turned and walked away without saying a word. I didn't watch him go, I wasn't interested in him anymore. He was nothing. Chloe turned back to me. Liam. Get in the car, I repeated, my voice sharper this time. I didn't wait for her to answer. I walked back to my car, yanked open the door, and got in. She followed after a few seconds, slipping into the passenger seat like she'd been commanded. We didn't talk on the drive home. I wasn't sure what I would have said anyway. The anger was building, but it hadn't boiled over yet. Not until we got home. As soon as we walked through the front door, I slammed it shut behind me, finally letting the tension explode. Tell me how long, I demanded, turning on her. How long has this been going on? Chloe didn't look scared. She didn't look ashamed. She just looked tired. It's been a few months, she admitted, crossing her arms over her chest like she was trying to shield herself from what was coming. A few months? I repeated, stepping closer to her. You've been sneaking around with that guy for months? She didn't deny it. I'm sorry, she said quietly, like that was supposed to mean something. Sorry? I laughed, but there was no humor in it. You've been screwing some guy behind my back, and now you're sorry? What the hell were you thinking? She sighed, like she was explaining something simple. It wasn't like that. I didn't plan for this to happen. Yeah, because you just accidentally ended up in bed with someone else, right? She flinched at that. Good. I didn't look, I was lonely, okay, she shot back, her voice rising now. You're never around anymore. You're always working, always busy with your own life. I didn't know how to tell you I was unhappy. So, you decided to screw someone else instead of talking to me? I didn't decide anything, Liam, she shouted now, finally showing some emotion. It just happened. I didn't want this to happen. I shook my head. Bullshit. You didn't want it to happen? Then why didn't you stop it? Why didn't you tell me something was wrong instead of lying to my face for months? She looked down, silent. She had no answer for that, and I knew it. You didn't care, I said, the realization sinking in. You didn't care enough to stop. You just did whatever the hell you wanted and expected me not to notice. She stayed quiet, staring at the floor. That was when I knew there was no point in talking anymore. She wasn't going to fight for us, and she wasn't going to fight for me. She'd already checked out. There was nothing left to say. I looked at her, standing there like she was the victim in all of this, and something broke. Maybe it was the realization that she didn't care, or maybe it was the fact that she didn't even try to care. But in that moment, I wasn't interested in talking anymore. I wanted her to feel what I was feeling. I wanted her to hurt. I grabbed my phone from the kitchen counter and scrolled through my contacts until I found her mother's number. Chloe's eyes shot up when she saw what I was doing. What are you doing? She asked, her voice shaky for the first time. I'm calling your mom, I said. Let's tell her what her daughter's been up to. Her eyes widened, and she stepped toward me. Liam, don't. Please. I smirked. Now she was worried. Oh, now you care? You didn't give a damn when you were sneaking around with your boyfriend, but now you don't want mommy to find out? Liam, stop. This is between us. Don't drag my family into this, she pleaded, her voice rising. Why not? They should know what kind of person you are. Maybe they'll be as proud of you as you are of yourself. I hit the call button, watching her panic. She lunged at me, trying to grab the phone out of my hand, but I stepped back, keeping it just out of her reach. Liam, I'm begging you. Please don't do this. She was practically in tears now, but I wasn't feeling generous. You don't get to beg. Not after what you've done. The phone rang once, twice, 
and then her mother's voice came on the line. I didn't give Chloe a chance to grab it this time. I put it on speaker. Liam, her mom's voice came through, warm and familiar. Is everything okay? Oh, everything's fine, I said, keeping my eyes locked on Chloe's. I just thought you'd want to know that your daughter's been sleeping around behind my back. With some guy from God knows where. I figured you'd appreciate the update. Liam. Chloe screamed, trying to pull the phone from my hand, but I shoved her away. There was silence on the other end of the line for a moment, and then her mother's shocked voice came through, wavering. What are you talking about? I didn't blink. Ask her yourself. Chloe collapsed onto the couch, burying her face in her hands. She wasn't even trying to stop me anymore. Her mother started speaking again, her voice frantic, but I ended the call before she could finish. You wanted this, I said coldly, looking down at her. You wanted to ruin us? Fine. But you're not getting out of this without consequences. I'm done letting you get away with everything. Chloe didn't respond. She just sat there, her body shaking as she sobbed into her hands. But I wasn't done yet. I marched upstairs, straight to our bedroom, yanking open the closet. There, hanging neatly, were all her things. The dresses, the shoes, all the crap she'd bought while I was busy busting my ass at work. I pulled them out, dragging the hangers across the room and dumping them into a pile on the bed. What are you doing? She called from downstairs, but I didn't answer. I didn't care if she knew. I grabbed a pair of scissors from the drawer and started cutting. Dress after dress, slashing through the fabric, shredding it to pieces. I wasn't thinking about it anymore, I was acting on instinct. It felt good. It felt right. By the time she ran upstairs and saw what I'd done, the bed was a pile of destroyed clothes. Her eyes went wide as she stared at the mess. What the hell is wrong with you, she screamed, grabbing at the ruined fabric. What's wrong with me? I laughed, looking at her. You cheated on me, Chloe. You threw everything we had away, and you're asking what's wrong with me? She just stared at me, speechless, like she couldn't comprehend what was happening. I tossed the scissors down onto the pile and turned to leave the room. Clean this up. I'm going out. Without another word, I walked out, leaving her standing there in the middle of the mess she'd created. I didn't come back until late. I wasn't sure where I'd go at first, but I ended up at a bar. Sitting there, staring at the half-empty glass in front of me, I thought I'd feel something more than anger. Maybe the sadness would hit, maybe the grief. But none of that came. It was just numbness, like the day had drained everything out of me. I couldn't even bring myself to care about what would happen next. It was after midnight when I finally walked back through the front door. The house was quiet. Chloe was sitting at the kitchen table, her eyes red and swollen, but she wasn't crying anymore. She looked up when I walked in, her face a mix of exhaustion and dread. Neither of us said anything for a minute. Then, she spoke. Are you going to leave me? I didn't answer right away. I just stood there, leaning against the counter, looking at her. It was the first time she'd asked a question that actually mattered. Not some excuse, not some plea for forgiveness, just a direct, simple question. And it was a good one. Should I? I asked, my voice quiet. She stared at the table, not meeting my eyes. I don't know. I don't know what I want. That's the problem, Chloe, I said feeling the words come out slowly, like I was thinking through them as I spoke. You didn't know what you wanted, so you wrecked everything in the process. I'm sorry, she whispered, and I could hear the sincerity in her voice this time. But it was too late. You think sorry's going to fix this? I asked. You think it's going to erase everything you've done? No, she said, shaking her head. I just... I don't know what else to say. I walked over to the table, pulling out the chair across from her and sitting down. For the first time that day, I felt calm. Tired, but calm. Here's the thing, I started, leaning forward on my elbows. You didn't just cheat, Chloe. You lied. 
You lied to me for months. You came home every day and pretended like everything was fine. You didn't care how it would affect me. You didn't care about us. She winced at that, but she didn't argue. I appreciated the silence for once. I could have understood if you were unhappy, I continued. If you'd told me things were falling apart. Hell, we could have talked about it. We could have done something. But you didn't give me a chance. You just made the decision for both of us. Chloe looked at me then, her eyes full of regret. I know I screwed up, she said. I know I hurt you. I didn't mean for it to get this far, Liam. I didn't. I leaned back, sighing. Yeah, but it did. And now we're here. We sat in that heavy silence, both of us trying to figure out what came next. But I already knew. I'm not staying, I finally said, my voice firm. I can't. Not after this. Her face crumpled, but she didn't argue. She didn't try to stop me. She just nodded, tears welling up again. I understand. I'll get my things in the morning, I said, standing up. We'll figure out the rest after that. Liam, she started, but I didn't let her finish. There's nothing left to say, Chloe. You made your choice. She dropped her gaze again, and I walked out of the kitchen, heading upstairs for what was probably the last time. I closed the bedroom door behind me, sinking down onto the edge of the bed, feeling that same numbness settle in again. There was no satisfaction in any of this, no relief. Just the weight of everything crashing down all at once. Tomorrow, I'd pack my bags. Tomorrow, I'd leave. But tonight, all I could do was sit there and think about the life we'd ruined together. Morning came too quickly. I hadn't slept much, just lay there in the dark, thinking. I heard Chloe moving around downstairs, but I didn't rush. I took my time packing, folding clothes into a suitcase, grabbing what was mine and leaving the rest. I didn't want anything to remind me of this house, this life we'd built and then destroyed. When I finally came downstairs, Chloe was sitting at the table again, a cup of coffee in front of her. She didn't say anything when she saw the suitcase. She just stared at it, like she knew this was the end. I set the suitcase down by the door and turned to her. There was nothing left to argue about, nothing left to explain. She knew it. I knew it. The air between us was empty. What happens now, she asked, her voice small. I shrugged. We'll figure it out. You can have the house if you want. I don't care about that. She nodded, but she wasn't really listening. I could tell her mind was somewhere else, maybe on what we used to have, maybe on how it all slipped away. I wasn't sure if she was grieving the marriage or just the comfort of it, the routine that we'd lost. I never wanted it to end like this, she said, barely above a whisper. I looked at her for a long moment. I believed her, but it didn't matter. It ended the way it did because of her choices, her lies. Wanting something different didn't change reality. Neither did I, I admitted, but it came out flat. The sadness was there, sure, but it was buried under layers of exhaustion, disappointment, and something I couldn't quite name. I wasn't angry anymore, not really. I was just done. I hope you'll be okay, she said, her voice trembling. I nodded. I will. Eventually. We sat there for a while, the silence stretching out, until there was nothing left but the inevitable. I stood up, grabbed my suitcase, and opened the door. Before stepping out, I turned back to her one last time. I loved you, Chloe. I really did. She didn't respond, just looked down at her coffee, tears silently falling. And that was it. That was the end of us. I walked out without looking back. Outside, the sun was shining, bright and indifferent to everything that had happened. I stood by my car for a second, letting the fresh air hit me, trying to feel something, relief, closure, anything. But there was just emptiness. I got into the car and drove. The road stretched ahead of me, and for the first time in what felt like months, I wasn't thinking about her. I wasn't thinking about revenge, about anger, or even about the betrayal. 
I was thinking about what was next, about rebuilding from the ground up. Maybe that's what I needed. A fresh start, free from everything that had poisoned the last few years of my life. In the end, what did I learn? That you can love someone and still have it all fall apart. That trust isn't something you rebuild once it's been shattered. And that walking away, even when it feels like you're giving up, is sometimes the only thing you can do. I wasn't okay yet. But I would be. And for now, that was enough.